Good evening. I'm Dennis Gerhard Stein. I'm the Ramsey County Attorney's Office Public Information Officer. Thanks for being here. Um, we will have a few brief remarks from the Ramsey <coughs> County Attorney himself, and then we'll open it up for questions. I'll start with sort of basic ground rules of please help us by telling us who you are, what your question is, and uh, what organization you represent. And I'll remind you that uh, of that when we uh, get into the question and answer period. Uh, but let's start with remarks from the county attorney. Good afternoon. Well, obviously, uh, uh, today um, we're disappointed with the jury's verdict. Um, I, I can't even imagine uh, what this must feel like uh, for the family of Philando Castile, his friends, and all those that loved him, and also for Diamond Reynolds. Uh, I'm just really sad for them. Um, and I, I really believe that as a community, uh, we should uh, pray for them uh, because, you know, they have um, suffered so much as a part of all of this. And uh, I really ask uh, that our community has all the empathy and the sympathy uh, for them. Um, you know, our position throughout this case has been, was that Philando Castile uh, did nothing that justified the taking of his life. You know, from our perspective, and what we were trying to prove was that Philando Castile was simply following Officer Yanez's commands and orders to retrieve his license. And just as he said, uh, the moments before being shot, and, he see, and as he was uh, laid dying in his car, uh, he said he wasn't reaching for it. Uh, and we gave it our best shot. We really did. And I'm just so proud of the team. Uh, that we assembled uh, as a part of this, um, but we, we really did, and we put our heart and soul into it, and uh, I'm not the only one disappointed. I, I'm speaking for this entire group because we really uh, put our heart and soul into that. Um, you know, when Officer Yanez chose to use lethal force, you know, as we said, there was no imminent threat, and we tried our best to prove um, that he didn't see a gun and that Castile wasn't pulling it out. And the toughest part of me, for me, uh, with respect to those facts, uh, is that he was so respectful in how he disclosed that he had that firearm. He said, sir, I have to tell you that I do have a firearm on me. And he went beyond what the law requires. He was compliant, he wasn't resisting, and at the end of the day, this was a traffic stop. Unfortunately, the jury didn't see it that way. And another thing that we um, were fighting for as a part of this particular case uh, was we were fighting for the integrity of this process. Uh, I know that this case uh, went worldwide, nationwide. And because of that, and because of the Facebook Live video, and just the sadness of seeing somebody die on video, um, that got people upset and sad and angry. And they were demanding that criminal charges be filed immediately. And one of the things that's so important in the role of a prosecutor is for us to be ministers of justice. We don't prosecute people just because we want to, or we think that that's what the public wants us to do. There's a process that is involved. And we fought for that fair and impartial investigation. And I want to thank the BCA for their efforts and their fact gathering uh, to submit to us, the prosecutors, who ultimately had to make the decision about whether or not criminal charges were warranted. And we took our time and we consulted a national use of force expert. And we were thoughtful and we are thorough. And we had great conversations, important conversations within our team about probable cause and whether or not we could prove this case beyond a reasonable doubt. And we thought that we could. And throughout that whole process, there was political pressure by the community, the public that was coming down to us saying, release that video, because we need to see it now. And we resisted, because the process 
is important. And at the end of the day, that video is evidence. And so I'm really proud of the way that we handled uh, the charging decision, the investigation, because I think that is critical. And we tried to be transparent as much as we could, but in the context of the investigation, we did what we needed to do. And then after criminal charges were filed, we had a robust adversarial process, and that's what the criminal justice system is. It's an adversarial process where the prosecution seeks to prove the case beyond a reasonable doubt, and defense counsel, uh, to the best of their ability, ensures that they hold our feet to the fire to make sure that we uphold the rights of the accused. And I believe that process uh, came to a completion today. I can't say enough about the trial team uh, that was involved. Uh, I have just uh, been very impressed with their effort and their diligence and um, all of their great work on this particular case. Rick Dusterhoff, Clayton Robinson, Jeff Paulson, and Raul Shaw. They did uh, remarkable work. I also want to um, thank the United States Department of Justice because we had asked for their assistance very, very early on. And um, they were involved with uh, monitoring this investigation, but also uh, offering Jeff Paulson. And I want to thank former United States Attorney Andy Luger and our current uh, acting uh, United States Attorney Greg Brooker. I also want to thank our special prosecutor, Don Lewis, and his associate, Jen Cornell, who helped us uh, with the charging decision. And I also want to thank uh, defense counsel as well, because they aggressively represented uh, their interests of their client, and that's an important part of this adversarial process. Um, this case, and I really this is an important point that I really want to make. You know, this case um, has always been about the, off, the actions and the inactions of Officer Yanez. This has never been an indictment of law enforcement as a whole. Just like in any other profession, one person's mistakes does not mean that the profession uh, is bad. And I am very saddened by this divide that I see that's happening with our community trust and law enforcement, and those are things that we really, really need to work on. Because I, as somebody who has always been supportive of law enforcement, and I still am today, uh, the work that they do is so critical to our public safety. They do things that uh, none of us, many of us in this room, uh, would never even imagine doing. And so we should always be thankful and grateful for the work that they do. You know, I also don't doubt uh, that Officer Yanez uh, is a decent person, as people testified in court. Um, but he made a horrible mistake from our perspective. And that's what this case was about, that, you know, good people can also make mistakes. And I know uh, that he, if he could, he would take back what he did, and we all wish, and he would too, that this never happened. But unfortunately, we can't. Um, you know, American society has traditionally placed a lot of um, deference and respect to law enforcement, and rightly so. Uh, it's articulated in the Supreme Court case of Graham versus Connor that we take into account that the job of an officer is a dangerous one, and they have to make split-second decisions, and that there are situations that change rapidly. Uh, but when we use and we evaluate an officer's use of force, uh, we look to that case, and we will continue to do so, but we just could not with respect to the facts of this case. Now, the hard part and the most important part of what I have to say to the public, and this is the part that I hope that all of you uh, will include in your reporting, as hard as this is for some members of our community, we have to accept this verdict. It was the, process, the product of a fair and impartial investigation 
thorough prosecution review and a trial by a jury of Ramsey County residents. Their decision must be respected because that is the fundamental premise of the rule of law. I want to thank Judge Leary uh, for ensuring a fair trial. And, um, and I know that this case generated critical conversations about police community relations, and those conversations really must continue uh, for the sake of our officers, for the sake of our residents, so that something like this never happens again. And I hope that we will in be intentional about listening to one another and work on bridging the gaps that exist today. That said, I understand that this verdict brings a lot of hurt and pain and deep-seated frustration for a lot of people in this community. And I suspect that they want to express their pain. And protests and demonstrations truly are the foundation of our democracy. And I'm sure that people may choose to express their voices. However, please, in the honor and memory of Philando Castile, please do so peacefully. Violence only begets more violence, and we do not want anyone getting hurt. In the words of the great civil rights leader uh, of our nation, Dr. Martin Luther King, the moral arc of the universe is long, but it bends towards justice. Thank you. Okay, we'll have a cut time for a couple questions. Let's start right off. Yeah, uh, Melody Reuters. Uh, I talked to Earl Gray, one of the defense attorneys, and he said that in my opinion, the case never should have been charged. It was charged because of political pressure. And it, and it wasn't, and I think I addressed that in my remarks. There are no further, further remarks? No, I'm, I, I don't want to engage in, uh, a response to that because it wasn't. Imagine if this case wasn't charged. I mean, throughout the trial, um, evidence was produced um, that certainly would justify the charges in this case. There was ample evidence if the jury wanted to, uh, if they chose to choose those facts, uh, they could have had a conviction. And Judge Leary uh, would have dismissed these cases um, if it was purely a political type of uh, prosecution, then, hold on, let me finish. Uh, he had the opportunity to dismiss the case uh, when the defense made that motion, and then he had the opportunity after uh, we presented our case. So no, nothing of that kind. So when you say, imagine if this case wasn't charged, what do you mean by that? Well, fr from that perspective, I mean, all the facts that came out in the trial, I mean, my God, I mean, th this case had to be charged. There were so many facts uh, that needed uh, to have uh, uh, consideration by a jury. So oh, that's our perspective, that yeah. Um, today, the jury opts for Giannis' testimony to be reread in its entirety, and Tuesday, they opt for a transcript of the DC interview that wasn't played during the trial. Should the state have played that one hour interview during this case instead of trying to offer it during the defense's presentation on Friday? You know what, there's a, I'll, I'll have a chance to maybe address that. I mean, this is not the last time that I'll speak to all of you. Um, but I don't really want to get into the play-by-play -play of going backwards with respect to the trial. But it seemed like a big issue for the jury. They, they asked two times to hear from Officer Yanis. And I didn't make that decision, so. John. Philando Castile's mother, Valerie, has called repeatedly to respect the process, to let it go through, and this was the, the result for her. What's your, your uh, response to people like her who didn't trust in the system but like, gave it the benefit of the doubt and at least from her perspective, failed here. Thank you. And uh, I'm sorry that it didn't uh, work out as uh, the Castile family would have liked. Um, but the process, um, we can't control it other than the fact of just doing the best that we can. The defense does the best that they can, and it's a product of uh, that adversarial system. Is this going to build more distrust in the criminal justice system? I hope not. Any other questions? I think I kind of answered it uh, already, but I just want to clarify for sure. Do you intend to re retry this case at all? And if it's so, when? It sounds like you don't. It sounds like you're not going to. We would be prohibited from doing so. You can't. You can't? No. Oh, well, I'm sorry. 
the, the jury came back with a verdict of not guilty. Question from Kirsten from Five Eyewitness News. You talked about that dash camera video that was played in court for the jury. Yes. I uh, recall that will be released by your office. And when it is, do you think when it's seen by the public, people will understand a little bit more into the jury's mindset? What do you think the reaction is going to be from folks when they see that? Well, um, I think what I would ask for the for the public as they review that video is to recognize um, there's another, there's many different perspectives. There was our perspective from the prosecution and we felt, you know, that the charges were warranted and the facts would support a conviction. Uh, there were also um, that facts that you will see in the video uh, that will also go towards uh, the explanation and the defense arguments. And so I would ask uh, that the public um, be thoughtful in viewing that and take into account that a jury in Ramsey County has found the defendant not guilty. Two more questions. Hey, Mitch Smith, New York Times, thanks, sir. Um, you talked about the process here, the public pressure that built to those charges and your desire to bring Officer Nyan and Justin right away, not releasing that video from the start. Now that there's been an acquittal, what should people who were pressing that pressure for the charges, what should they make of how the system worked here? Well, how should they interpret what transpired today? Well, I hope that they believe that uh, the way that we processed this case, like I said, was focused on the facts and the law and making sure that the gathering of those facts uh, were fair and impartial and that when we made this decision, uh, we were focusing on whether or not um, people around the table that would be involved with trying this case believed that we had a reasonable likelihood of being able to prove this case beyond a reasonable doubt. And that didn't occur, but that's a part of what our process is. And then, of course, it goes into the, the trial process and ultimately jury decides. And, of course, you know, another thing, too, and we've always stressed this, that the standard of proof in a criminal case is incredibly hard, high. It's beyond a reasonable doubt. And you need all jurors to agree to that. So. Last question. I would say that we have to. Law enforcement and police are necessary in our community to ensure that we have public safety, but I think anybody in law enforcement would say that there's a lot of work that needs to be done, but it needs to happen from all perspectives, and I think the conversation that's been generated from this case and others um, should continue, but oftentimes what I see is that uh, we're not really listening to one another, and I know that there's a lot of emotion uh, involved with um, uh, these types of issues, but I think that um, conversations can continue, uh, but somehow we've got to figure out a way to bridge the gaps that exist. Okay, thank you Great, very thank much. Thank you. I'll stick around for a